In this instruction video, we will discuss the factorial design. In this design, two or more independent variables, also known as factors, are investigated simultaneously. As with other randomized experimental designs, this design can be represented in a scheme. In this scheme, x and y are two factors or independent variables. And the entire design contains every possible combination of the factors. Factorial designs like these are also called 2x2 two two designs, because each factor has two levels. Let's consider an example about investigating if a new drug reduces migraine attacks. We could create three conditions that differ in the dosage of the drug, low, medium and high, and now we are able to investigate the effect of the factor dosage, the independent variable, on the number of migraine attacks, the dependent variable. For example, does a higher dosage of the new drug reduce the number of migraine attacks? The line in this graph simply reflects the average migraine attacks among the participants with the same condition of dosage. So these dots represent the averages per dosage and are being connected to visualize the effect of dosage on migraine attacks, to see if the average migraine attacks decreases or increases or stays the same across conditions. In this example, there is only one independent variable, so one factor, namely dosage. But this simple design could be extended by adding a second factor, for example, gender. When the effect of two or more factors is being investigated, we refer to the design as factorial design. We could assign men and women to each of the three dosages. We would end up with six conditions. Men who receive a low, medium or high dosage, and women who receive a low, medium or high dosage. In addition to the effect of dosage, we are also able to investigate the effect of the second factor, gender. We could, for instance, investigate our hypothesis that women suffer more from migraine attacks than men. Not only can we investigate the effect of dosage and gender, but we can also investigate the combined effect of the two factors. We can see if a higher dosage of the drug is more effective in reducing the number of migraine attacks for women as compared to men. The effects of the factor separately are referred to as main effects. The combined effect of the factors is called the interaction effect. In this example, we are dealing with a two-way interaction because the effect combines two factors, dosage and gender. A combined effect of more than two factors is called a higher order interaction effect. Suppose we add diet as a factor, with two conditions, a normal diet and a no-fun diet that eliminates all chocolate and red wine. So now we have three factors, dosage, gender and diet. This requires that each of the six groups is split in two. Half of the participants are being assigned to the normal diet and half to the no-fun diet. We can now investigate the main effect of diet. Is a no-fun diet effective at reducing migraine attacks? But we can also look at the two-way interaction between diet and gender. Maybe the no-fun diet is effective in reducing migraine attacks for men, but not for women. We could also look at the two-way interaction between diet and dosage. Maybe a higher dosage is more effective when participants follow a no-fun diet as compared to a normal diet. Finally, we can look at the three-way interaction, the combined effect of dosage, gender and diet. It could be that a higher dosage is effective for women regardless of the diet, but maybe for men a higher dosage is effective only when they follow a no-fun diet. To summarize, in a factorial design, 
two or more independent variables are investigated simultaneously. Factorial designs are very useful because they allow us to investigate not only the main effects of each vector, but also the interaction effects.